Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and here's a headline from the Daily Hoddle. What is XRP's use case? Ripple executive and venture coinist founder tackle utility of fourth largest cryptocurrency. And uh, I'm going to run through uh, this, well, the majority of the Twitter thread. It's highly fascinating. Anytime you can get this type of insight from David Schwartz, who, of course, is Ripple CTO, co-creator of the XRP Ledger, uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to just learn from him, learn his perspective. He's just an absolute wealth of knowledge, brilliant man. And, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me that this individual who he was uh, talking to um, he just, he, he was not getting it. And, and so, you know, you know where I come from? Like, cause look, I just want to believe as many things in, in life that as, as many things are, that are true. I just, I, that's what I want to believe. Like I, I'm not ideologically driven. That's a better way to say it. Perhaps, you know, I'm not ideologically driven. So when I entered the world of crypto in 2017, I was a blank slate. I just wanted to get to the truth of the matter. It's like, okay, so I, I, you know, tell me everything you can tell me about Ripple and XRP. I want to find out if this business model makes sense and if it makes sense to, to have uh, XRP in the works anywhere. And after I finished my, my research, I was like, holy hell. And th that's, that was my aha moment. I was like, it's like you can have business models that cannot exist without technologically sufficient decentralized cryptocurrencies. And in this case, we're talking about XRP as a bridge currency. And that was the moment when I was like, oh, wow. Cryptocurrency is never going away. Even if I'm wrong about XRP, like cryptocurrency, not ever going to go away because it represents value, which is different than price. And if something is valuable and it's an asset, it deserves to be traded in perpetuity on open markets. And that's what's happening right now with XRP. And so I'm going to run through this thing. Now, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And so you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. But, um, and ultimately, and you'll see there's one, one of the tweets here. Uh, David Schwartz, it, he talks about the idea of like what it would take to quote unquote beat XRP. And it's just an interesting take here. So um, I'm just going to jump into the thread. And it started here with Luke Martin here at the top uh, who wrote, what if those TikTok analysts are right about astronomy and XRP actually does go to $589? And yeah, for those of you that didn't know, XRP within the last month or so in particular, I don't know if it's still happening, but uh, was getting talked about. Uh, extensively on uh, on TikTok, social media app TikTok, which is where all the cool people go, right? And then Luke Martin wrote this. I asked David Schwartz what XRP is useful for because it did not make sense to me and his response didn't make sense to me either. If it's for payments, stable coins are better. Even if you think it's better for payments, there's no incentive to hold, not SOV or income generating. And so at this point, what I would say is um, you should be more curious. Uh, to that's I would and look nothing against Luke Martin. Period. And I don't mean this. Uh, I'm not like trying to be disrespectful at all. I'm just saying if, if you don't know, because what think about it. If your if your stance makes more sense, just right off the bat here, Luke. What do you know that Ripple's customers who are utilizing it uh, for for their business model? What do you know that they don't? Like what can you advise Ripple's customers that are using it on a daily basis? What, what, what information could you share with them to make them recognize that they're not actually benefiting from it? Now, obviously, that sounds silly. You couldn't do it. They wouldn't be using it if there wasn't sort of some sort of a reason for it. So if I were you, I'd be more curious and say, OK, what is it that I don't understand rather than taking the position that stable coins are better because they're not? And, you know, that was one of, and it's a fair question. You know, like I, when I entered the world of crypto three years ago, that was a question. It's like, well, why does it have to be XRP? You know, why not a bank coin or a stable coin or a central bank digital currency down the road? You know, like, why not? And, and those are legit questions, but they're also legit answers. You just haven't found them yet. So David Schwartz did, uh, did jump in here and responded to Luke. He wrote the following. If the whole world settled on one stable coin, I'd agree with you. But stable coins are always going to be tied to jurisdictions and counterparties, too. So it is unlikely one winner will emerge. Today, one of the roles of the dollar is acting as an intermediary or bridge between currencies. For that role, it's tied to the U.S. jurisdiction as both an advantage and a disadvantage. Better U.S. than a, uh, a worse jurisdiction, but a pure digital asset is, is, uh, is better still. Imagine a future, maybe not so far off, 
where everything is tokenized and you can have your salary agreed in dollars, but gold gets delivered to your wallet and you can buy groceries by selling tokenized shares of a writ. In that world, there will need to be concentrations of liquidity. You can't go from gold to shares of an obscure rate uh, by finding people who want to go those same shares to gold. The liquidity concentrating asset likely can't be one country's currency. How could that be universal? So sure, if you get paid in dollars and pay your bills in dollars, it may make sense for you to use a dollar denominated stable coin for short term holdings and payments. Absolutely. Uh, and so let me pause right there. XRP's use case has never been for domestic payments, okay? In what world would it make sense to have a conversion where it's United States dollars, then you throw XRP in the middle for reasons, and then right back to United States dollars? You just added friction. This is to convert from one currency to another, right? And I think some people don't even understand that. So that's why I've always said stable coins, like, they can be genuinely useful here. It's just we're talking about a different solving a different problem. Anyway, David Schwartz continues. But I can't see a dollar denominated stable coin being your direct connection to the rest of the world economy because it's neither universal nor neutral. For one thing, it will only be used by people who would do business with its counterparty and who find its jurisdiction friendly. Medium sized financial institutions have been pretty receptive to the argument that they're not going to get everyone else to use a system they control. And given that, surely they would uh, they'd prefer a system nobody can control to one that's controlled by their largest competitor or adversary. I know this is pretty far out there, and maybe I'm just a bit crazy to suggest this, but maybe some governments will see the wisdom of this reasoning. If they can't run the system, maybe a system nobody can run is better than one run by their geopolitical adversaries. This is a point I've been making on the channel for years here, and this guy just needed to search for it, and he didn't find it. But anyway, uh, and then David Schwartz writes, My personal vision for XRP since 2013 or so was this idea of deep, open, public pools of liquidity that anyone anywhere could contribute to and draw off of, a global market for assets that someone happens to already have exactly where someone else happens to need them to be. And so uh, Luke Martin did respond. He wrote, uh, thanks for engaging with me on this. Joel, of course, his name's David, but uh, he's, he's at Joel Katz. That's his handle on Twitter, but uh, we'll let that one go. Anyway, <laughs> please know that I am responding in good faith. And when I ask questions, it's to understand more. I still have one giant question which does not make sense and that you did not answer. Let's say we end up living in a world exactly like the one you described, where everything is tokenized and people slash financial institutions all over the world will need a liquidity pool uh, to trade in and out of assets that may not always have a liquid market. Financial institutions and individuals would benefit by having a bridge slash liquidity pool that they can move from asset X to asset Y by trading through the bridge asset. The characteristics that would make this bridge asset the winner are likely uh, the following. Not tied to one country currency, a jurisdictional slash regulatory clarity, low volatility, lower the better for users that only care about asset X and asset Y. Well, look, as far as the volatility stuff, the transactions with XRP are so fast that there's, and the math has been done on this. Ripple has reported this and proven it, mathematically so, that the risk you assume with the the, uh, the volatility of XRP over a three to five second ledger closing is less than you know three to five uh, days, or whatever it takes to, to settle on the, the SWIFT network. Because even if the, the, um, the, the uh, you know, fiat currencies don't aren't as volatile as XRP in terms of percentage changes, exposure over time makes them more volatile than that three to five second window of XRP closing and settling on the on the XRP ledger. Anyway, uh, Luke continues here. In that world and situation you, you describe, I still do not see how XRP is superior to using it either. Stablecoin tied to basket of currencies, algorithmic stablecoin, Bitcoin, or even the US dollar. So look, <laughs> break these down. As far as being tied to a basket of currencies, this goes back to the uh, this idea of like, you know, the, the nations throughout the world harmoniously governing, uh, governing over any cryptocurrency, and this is the one that gets used. And then on top of that, you still need a business to implement, because think about this, even if that were to be used, you have to have a business 
that is uh, that is creating these corridors, and and there has to be software behind it. You have to have some support staff, and that that doesn't just happen, you know. And people seem to forget that as well. And as far as Bitcoin, it's slow, costly, and energy inefficient, so it's a it's horrible for this use case. I like Bitcoin. I hold Bitcoin. It's bad for this use case, All right? Um, and then uh, if you're talking about even the the, the U.S. dollar. <laughs> That's you're just recreating the frictions. This just goes to show how he, he he has a fundamental misunderstanding of the correspondent banking system. That that's at the heart of this, and so it's fine that he's asking questions. That's why I said at the beginning, nothing against the guy. Period. Um, I'm glad that he became curious, but rather because initially he was just forming these opinions and said that stable coins would be better. Then David Schwartz jumped in, and he's still not getting it, which is just fine. Like keep go down the this path of trying to understand. But um, let me just go on with his tweets. I, I could I could talk from your ear off for like a half hour on this stuff here. <laughs> so I'll try to not make this video go too long. But uh, here's why, and I'll ask my final question below. We already have a perfect case study for the world you describe. We have thousands of obscure tokenized assets here in crypto. What is the best bridge currency in the crypto universe? You're right, it's Bitcoin. Most liquid survived regulatory attacks better than any other bridge decentralized. Well, again, I already cited the reason that doesn't make sense. Too slow, too costly. I saw a transaction for, on the Bitcoin blockchain the other day of over $67. For XRP, it's fractions of a penny. You know, if you're trying to reduce the cost for transfers and make them go faster, no. <laughs> like Bitcoin's not the answer. And anyway, Luke continues, though. I imagine some are thinking, yeah, but it's too slow and throughput is not high enough transactions on exchange or liquidity pools don't have to settle on chain all that matters is the liquidity pool slash matching engine and using the asset with characteristics you describe i'll even see that bitcoin might not be best for this use in that case what's the second most useful bridge currency as decided by the free markets uh, stable coins it's the second most liquid pair for all assets behind bitcoin for all the reasons you described. And so let me go back to everything that I've already had. Like, I don't want to like beat this horse to death here, right? And so I'm glad that he conceded that Bitcoin wouldn't necessarily be the best use case. So I'll stop talking about that. But as far as stable coins, you're not looking, you need to look beyond just the liquidity and look beyond just the technical attributes of the coin. You need to look at who's going to build out a business around this. No one. Uh, if it's a stable coin, no one's going to do that. Uh, you know, and then on top of that, what about the non-technical attributes that make it desirable to utilize XRP as a bridge currency rather than a stable coin, which somebody else controls, right? And so that's at the heart of the matter. And that's what people tend to miss. Anyway, Luke continues, using the crypto market as a case study for the world you described, not a perfect one, but a good enough one. We already know what is more likely to win. For fun, let's imagine if XRP was the winner and my reasoning is flawed. XRP has re less regulatory clarity than stables or Bitcoin. It's not as liquid. Even if both of those were solved, the volatility is disadvantageous for the use case you described in perfect world. And no, the, the volatility is nothing. It, it doesn't matter. Because look, the, the market makers, we're talking about cryptocurrency exchanges, and he doesn't know this either. They're just making money on the buying and selling of it. So the more flows go through their exchange via on-demand liquidity, the happier they are. So the volatility is not an issue, and it will become less volatile uh, over time. Also, as the crypto asset class grows into the trillions, as long as XRP continues to get used and gets the regulatory clarity, you know, it, it's, its market cap will grow as well. The, liqui the uh, liquidity will grow, and uh, then you can open up more on-demand liquidity corridors. So it just it doesn't happen like a snap of a finger, though, right? Anyway, Luke continues. Let's say I'm wrong on most or all my assumptions about which bridge asset wins. What is the purpose of holding XRP? Value does not accrue to the bridge asset. Stable coins as base pair, great example. And velocity is always high as users only need to bridge it. Well, I, I can answer for myself. Uh, XRP is a scarce asset. And given that I know businesses need it to conduct their business model, and I think more will need it in the future to conduct that model, um, people are always going to speculate on cryptocurrencies. And so I believe that that will result in the price increasing. If I know a business must have it and I have some of it, that's the utility represents value. And like I said earlier, if some, if an asset that you can hold has value, it deserves to have an open market price in perpetuity. And it does. And so like this is happening today. And so what is already proven, like the way people are behaving around this ecosystem, it already exists. And, and this part still is not making sense to him, but it's provably the case. Like I, I'm, I'm one human that's doing this. 
And I know that tons of others, I'm sure many of you listening, are, are doing that for the same reason, among others. On top of that, other developers building on top of the ledger. So it's not just Ripple, but uh, even if they're the, the primary driver here, fine, whatever, but still. Anyway, and he, cont he continues here. With his final tweet, I can concede almost all of my assumptions to yours and still only see how it would benefit Ripple, the company, but not to holders of the bridge asset you suggest XRP. Um, then writes uh, TLDR, XRP, likely the worst bridge asset, and if it wins against all odds, still not clear value accrual. The market disagrees. And so you got to look at, so you got to question what do, what, what do you not know, given that the market's behaving differently than what, what you, how you thought it would behave? What do you not know? You just got to be more curious, okay? It's it's provably so. And again, I'm I'm one anecdotal example here, fine, but there are millions, <laughs> literally. Anyway, um, David Schwartz responded, if you don't know which asset you'll need next, it makes sense to hold the bridge asset. If you are just being opportunistic and want to make money, you want to hold the asset people will need when they sell a rare asset cheap, and that will be the bridge asset. I don't buy the argument that the performance of the native chain doesn't matter. If that were true, Bitcoin wouldn't have been a significant innovation because it's just a better native chain. If it takes hours to set up a pipe or fund a pipe, you need to pre-fund the pipe. XRP has less regulatory clarity in the US than Bitcoin, maybe less than ETH. Everything else? Who knows? If you buy the argument that people will just work around Bitcoin's native chain's weaknesses, then why the heck do we like Bitcoin at all? Wasn't the whole point to build a new awesome bottom layer instead of working around inferior technology with kludgy layers above? Non-algorithmic stablecoins are always going to be tied to the jurisdiction of whoever backs them or redeems them. They can't be universal. It's easy to imagine a perfect algorithmic stablecoin, but I don't think anybody knows how to build one and it may not happen. To say Bitcoin will beat XRP, you have to think that all that matters is its lead. It's slower. It's more expensive. It lacks on-chain features like account security management. We don't know if block generation will be stable as the block reward drops. It has forced stakeholders, miners, who want high fees when users want low fees. Really, all it has is a lead first mover advantage. I concede that's likely enormous. Does this mean XRP will definitely become the world's bridge asset and overtake Bitcoin? Of course not. That is definitely not what I'm saying. Among other things, I do think the whole digital asset space will grow. Market leaders are vulnerable to losing ground to superior technologies if there are structural reasons they can't adopt those innovations. And Bitcoin can't innovate because its value proposition is too focused on it being the same in the future as it is today. Oh, one last thing. This is all just me. This is not necessarily Ripple's view, and it's definitely not XRP's view, whatever that would even mean. Bravo. That's good. I like the back and forth. That's good. I, I like a civil back and forth. I just, I'm just like nothing again. Too big, like I know I keep saying it, but I mean it. Like nothing against Luke. He just, he's got to be more curious. Though. Like it is working. Customers are using it, and so if you know better than the customers, go talk to them. You convince the customers that they're wrong for using it. Convince the, the the market holders like me that it's stupid to speculate on a cryptocurrency, like because that's what we're talking about here. Because any cryptocurrency, I, I believe that as uh, as utility will uh, additionally have store of value uh, in in perpetuity as long as it's useful. That's that's my personal belief. So I just think he's missing some major points here. But uh, fun back and forth. I'll go ahead and wrap it up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.